Is there water on Mars? How can we explain the absence of liquid state water on its surface? Is there any chance to extract water from the interior of Mars? How much water was present billions of years ago on the Red Planet? Scientists are trying to figure all of these things out. As years pass by, we start to get new answers, which lead to new important questions. But why do we care about water on Mars? Keep watching the video to get to know more about the secrets of the Red Planet. Are you thirsty? Good news, we have water. And maybe it's much more than you think. The first spacecraft from Earth to visit Mars was Mariner 4 in 1965. Since then, several robotic spacecraft have flown by, orbited, or landed on Mars and sent back lots of information about this world so different from our own. Mars is a cold, bleak wasteland with very thin air that we Earthlings could never breathe. However, many of the pictures our telescopes, orbiters, and rovers have sent back show signs that liquid water might have been on the surface of Mars long ago. Also, we can see ice caps at the North and South Poles. All these signs of water are very exciting. Why? Because on Earth, almost everywhere there is water, there is life. Whether the water is boiling hot or frozen, some sort of creature seems to thrive in it. At this point, it's fair to ask ourselves, is it the same on other planets? If water once flowed on Mars, did life once thrive there too? Or maybe there is still water on Mars, only it has gone underground. Could there be tiny life forms like bacteria on Mars even now? That's why we are looking for water. Is it enough for you? Can Mars support life? This is what we are actually asking when we ask, is there water on Mars? All of these questions, together with the curiosity of human mankind, pushed us to go and see what we could say about Mars, the dream planet which some have already called our second home. If we ever find water on Mars, or at least if we ever find a way to get water on Mars without bringing it from Earth, it would be a revolution and we could start to drastically change our mindset in the prevision of human colonization of Mars. Probes were launched, laser beams were sent to Mars and reflected right back to Earth. Telescopes were pointed to the red planet. Thousands of images were captured, a big quantity of cinematical, Spectroscopical, chemical, and biological data was collected by scientists over the years. Rovers landed on Mars, etc. As you can see, we spent a lot of effort to understand better the secrets of this romantic, cold, red planet. Here's what we already know about water on Mars. On Mars, meteor strikes may have generated tsunamis ten times larger than anything seen here. Behemoth waves of destruction capable of submerging the Statue of Liberty and the Capitol building. The mega tsunamis would have occurred about 3.4 billion years ago when two large space rocks slammed into a chilly sea in the Martian north. The first of these impacts, according to a study published this week in Scientific Reports, spawned massive, nearly 400 foot tall, 120 meter tall waves that carried bus sized boulders many miles inland. The waves flooded more than 220,000 square miles, or 570,000 square kilometers, an area larger than many U.S. states. How do we know that? Today, evidence for these ancient cataclysms take the form of channels carved by the receding waves, lobe-shaped fields strewn with boulders, and craters that appear to have been filled with now-evaporated seawater. Scientists say also their findings suggest rivers may have flowed on the surface of Mars for hundreds of thousands of years. The evidence came from new satellite pictures of the Martian surface. These images were captured by a camera on NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. The camera can take detailed pictures of the surface while orbiting the planet from about 400 kilometers away. Can you believe it? We were able to see the traces of an old Mars river. Also, we know that at the poles, there is water ice. This is amazing. And it's not over. A little time ago, researchers made a big splash when they announced that Mars might be hiding lakes beneath its southern pole. The European Mars Express spacecraft used its Mars Advanced Radar for subsurface and ionosphere sounding, MARSIS, to detect the proposed water. 
Ground penetrating radar sent radar pulses to the surface, then timed how long it took for them to be reflected. The properties of these subsurface layers affect how long it takes for the beams to return. Mars's investigation revealed that the Martian South Pole is composed of multiple layers of ice and dust to a depth of about nearly 1 mile or 1.5 kilometers, spread over a 124 mile wide, 200 kilometer region. Today we have pieces of evidence for a bunch of frozen lakes under the Martian soil. It is actually a gathering of lakes. Long story short, Mars had water until it didn't. Scientists think that about 4 billion years ago, the planet had substantial amounts of liquid water on its surface, enough to form rivers, lakes, seas, and even oceans, and perhaps also to support life. But something happened in the following billion years, triggering the loss of this water from the surface until all that was left was the cold, dry wasteland of a world that we see today. Why and how that happened remains somewhat of a mystery. We don't exactly know why the water levels decreased and Mars became arid. So we have to figure out why Mars lost its water. This is what we are going to talk about from now on in the video, and the answers we'll give will be amazing. In recent years, results from NASA's Mars orbiting MAVEN spacecraft suggest the driver of this water depletion may have been an atmospheric loss. Long ago, for reasons unknown, Mars lost its strong magnetic field, exposing the planet to atmosphere eroding outbursts from the Sun. As a result, much of Mars's air escaped to space, presumably carrying away most of the planet's water with it. But in a new paper published this week in the journal Science, Professor Scheller and her colleagues argue this process alone cannot explain Mars's modern-day aridity. Instead, they say that a substantial amount of the planet's water, between 30 and 99 percent, retreated into the crust where it remains today in a process known as crustal hydration. That loss to space wouldn't have to be very large to explain the loss of all of Mars's water. Scientists realized they needed to pay attention to the evidence from the last 10 to 15 years of Mars exploration in terms of the nature of water in the Martian crust. Using this swath of evidence from a variety of Mars missions, the team found that the rate of atmospheric loss today was not enough to explain the disappearance of all Mars's water. Scientists over the past few years learned a lot about the interaction between the Sun and the Martian atmosphere. They learned how the water vapor in the air of Mars is bombarded by various ultraviolet radiation from the Sun and how a lot of this interacts eventually, causing the hydrogen to get stripped from oxygen and essentially the water molecules to break apart and escaping from the planet, mostly because hydrogen inside water is a very light gas by itself, and so it's not going to stick around the planet and essentially escapes into outer space. But today we know that there is an isotope of hydrogen known like deuterium, and certain parts of water contain this deuterium in there as well. Because deuterium is almost exactly double the mass of simple hydrogen, it's more likely to stick around and is more likely to actually remain on Mars thus deposited in some sort of a rock or somewhere else where we can later find it. And because scientists today know the general ratio between hydrogen and deuterium in normal water, we can normally determine or at least estimate the presence of water on early Mars. What scientists found using this technique, in other words, by comparing the number of deuterium to hydrogen atoms found in a certain sample, scientists were able to estimate that the total amount of water must have been much, much larger, and the amount of water present. In a few words, it's not possible that all the Martian water got simply lost in space, whereas hydrogen is light enough to easily slip away from a planet's gravitational grip. The element's heavier isotope, deuterium, cannot. Thus, a relative dearth of deuterium in the atmosphere today suggests that less water may have been lost in this way than was thought. There must be a parallel explanation to it, a complimentary one. But which one? Before finding out the answer to this question, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve and make these videos better for you, the viewer. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking the bell so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Crustal hydration, in which water is incorporated into the crystalline structure of minerals, is a natural choice for that explanation. And in fact, it was previously proposed as an important mechanism for Martian water loss. 
Some evidence shows that the process must have occurred at certain points in the planet's history. In a few words, the crust is made of some sort of sponge rocks, absorbing water over time. But don't expect to squeeze the sponge and get water. In fact, this crustal hydration scenario would not mean Mars hides a liquid water wonderland in its subsurface. Rather, because the water would be locked in minerals, the Martian crust could be especially enriched in clays and hydrated salts. So why didn't this happen to Earth? The fact that on Earth this process has not robbed us of our oceans may be linked to plate tectonics, which allows the rock-locked water to be efficiently released through volcanic activity. On a planet free of plate tectonics such as Mars, however, this water would remain trapped. No matter how high the loss rate was, however, a significant amount of water would have been going into the crust, likely more than half the planet's total. The research team estimates that Mars would have lost between 40 and 95% of its water via this process in the planet's Noachian period, which stretches from 4.1 billion to 3.7 billion years ago. But even later in Mars's history, bursts of volcanic activity could have recycled some of the subsurface moisture, potentially giving the planet's habitability a much-needed boost. So currently, scientists think the water was available 3.5 billion years ago. But what about 3 billion years ago? Of course, current and future missions could help us better answer the question. Space missions from all over the world are going to leave for the Red Planet, as well as studies that are already being conducted. Meanwhile, NASA's Perseverance rover, which landed on Mars last month, could also provide useful results on how extensively hydrated materials are at its landing site, Yezero Crater. More importantly, it will collect samples that could help delve into this problem further once they are brought back to Earth next decade. We can measure the deuterium to hydrogen ratio in the water in those, which will help us sort out what ancient parts of Mars were like. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Did you like it? Let us know in the comments below. See you next time on the channel.